We want to mirror the community we serve. But what about a neighborhood gone bad? You get into a gang, you got protection. City Beat investigates Sacramento gangs and police intervention. I will never use a gun to settle an argument. Hello and welcome to City Beat. I'm Joe Oliver. The graffiti on these walls is like a foreign language to most of us, but it's a language Sacramento police officers have to know in order to stay one step ahead of the gangs in our community. Gang activity continues to be a growing problem, putting youth and those caught in the crossfire at serious risk. When you're growing up out on the streets, you got to find somebody you're cool with, you know what I mean? And if you get into a gang, you got protection. Anywhere you go, you got your homeboys with you, you know what I mean? And for Tanisha Fish, now 22 years old and barely getting her life back together, the gang became her family. From a very young age, they were the only family she knew. I was seven, and it was peer pressure, basically. Come on, man, come on, homie, you kick it with us, cool. You know, we bang our colors, flag our colors. And it was just that easy. Next thing I know, I'm in a gang. In a gang, doing drugs and committing violence almost daily. Back when I was in the gang and out on the streets, it was all about the same thing, getting drunk, getting high, going, messing up the other gang. It's a decision and a cycle many gang members fall easily into. Like others, Tanisha says her decisions began affecting everyone around her. It's not that you're like meaning to, you know, hurt anybody else, but that who you're going for, but you do. You know, you don't you don't see that when you're in the middle of it. And detectives with the Sacramento Police Department's gang unit say that's almost always the way it works. Just look at graffiti. Basically, they're letting everyone in the neighborhood know which gang in that neighborhood is representing that neighborhood. And it lets rival gang members know that they need to stay out of that neighborhood or they may face some consequences. But to the rest of us, it's blight. And graffiti is only one small element to a much larger problem. The fact that gang violence never really seems to slow. Retaliation is a big problem because that's how a lot of the violence in, in our city occurs. It's because one gang may disrespect another gang and disrespect usually won't go unanswered. Sometimes it's, it's uh, minimal or sometimes it, all the way, it increases all the way up to homicide. According to law enforcement, violence is such a major part of gang life, it's found in its legal description. A gang is three or more people involved in a group that claim a neighborhood, a turf, a color, a symbol, and they engage in a pattern of criminal be uh, behavior. Police say there are 4,000 validated gang members in the city of Sacramento and more joining every day. One of the largest new populations comes from a place you might not imagine, the locker-strewn halls of high school. School resource officer John Houston admits adolescence can be tough. His job is to make kids feel safe at school and to let them know their options at a time when they may feel that options are slim. One of the things I do is every minute that these kids are in school, I try and be there as well so that the presence is there to help deter crime that way. And also during high profile periods before school, at lunch, and then after school, I try and go out and mingle with as many of the kids as possible just to try and get the rapport with them and they can see that I'm not just a authoritarian type person, I'm actually you know, a, uh, a good person and a good resource for them as well on campus. Houston is part of a team of resources that Sacramento schools now use to keep kids out of gangs. They've identified nearly 400 young gang members in Sacramento City Schools this year alone. Houston works with the school's gang violence supervisor as well as the street units to keep tabs on known gang members. I tell the kids always there's three, three things that happen to gang members. One, they get out. Two, they end up seriously injured or killed. 
or third, they end up in prison. Those like Houston, who work on campus, are often the first to lay eyes on the next generation of gang members. The schools have a very important role to play. They play dual roles sometimes. Ki you know, sometimes kids are at school more than they're at home. They're with their teachers more than they're with their parents. And while parents are believed to be one of the strongest preventers when it comes to kids considering gangs, they're also easily fooled. Gang violence prevention supervisor Tracy Lopez says part of her job is educating parents about how to spot gang indicators. Lopez is an employee who works for the school district but has an eye for law enforcement. Some of the signs that we look for when kids are first starting to get involved with gangs are uh, graffiti. They'll practice writing gang symbols. They'll write them on backpacks and on note paper in their notebooks, on the covers of their notebooks. They'll start to wear gang colors and certain types of clothing that identify with certain gangs. Those are, those are primarily the, the first indicators. These are items that have been confiscated from students. Each of these items has a strong tie to gang activity, although to an untrained eye, some of it may seem harmless. While a parent might not know a particular hat or symbol is a gang indicator, you can be sure the rival gang does. And that puts the student wearing the item in a path of potential violence. You can get hats um, in your gang color with the team that, you know, might happen to have initials that can represent your gang. And that's what this is. This is the King's logo, but it's not the King's color, so it doesn't represent the Sacramento Kings. It represents the gang that this person intended. And while some kids may think gang life is an only option, school officials say what they're often seeking is an answer to their insecurity. Poor self-esteem, lack of family structure, lack of positive activities are, you know, some of the reasons that kids get involved with gangs in the first place. So if we can provide those things for them, I think we could definitely see a reduction in, you know, that being attractive to them. 18-year-old Jose Shunkash is proof that this system of providing alternatives really works. What was going on? I was hanging around with you know, like certain people that I wasn't supposed to, you know, gangbangers. Most of, most of them were gangbangers. He credits a school counselor for pulling him out of class while he was attending Hiram Johnson High School and telling him what he knew in his heart was the truth. You know, like, you're going to get kicked out of high school, you know? You can't have, you can't go on like this. You can't get F's everywhere you go. And I just started listening. I'm like, for some reason, it uh, caught my attention. It caught his attention, and so did La Familia. This community counseling center is part of the police department and school district's arsenal of gang fighting tools. We focus on the prevention of, uh, of trying to redirect youngsters into some positive activities to. Uh, avoid them, them getting involved in gang activities um, and negative type of uh, behaviors. Um, this partnership has been uh, over six years already. La Familia provides kids with computers to do homework, classes like karate to become involved in, and counselors who know the struggles they face and treat them more like friends than troublemakers. When they were out there, uh, they many times have a sense of connection with peers, but at times it's negative kind of connection and negative type of activities they're involved with. So they, they, they're getting something out of it. They're getting a feeling of importance, of belonging. Uh, so when they come here, we try to replace that in a positive way. We've actually been there. I think sometimes that, that says a lot to a young person because number one, they know you can relate to them, and number two, it gives them some kind of hope that, okay, I can do better too. And that sense of hope took Jose from somewhere he knew he shouldn't be. You just start skipping. You, like, you watch others do drugs, and like, hey, you're like, that ain't cool, but you still want to do it for some reason. To somewhere he now knows he belongs. It's made a difference, a big difference in my life. Uh, I'm, I'm, getting, you know, I'm going to college. Someday, Jose wants to be a psychologist help kids facing the same tough decisions he did. My life is better. I mean, there's a whole bunch of chances and opportunities I'm going to take, and, and hopefully I can deal with everything that comes my way. And for Tanisha Fish, who spent 10 long years in a gang and three more living under a bridge, 
When you ask how she feels now, she says, lucky. I'm, I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones, really, you know, because, uh, like I said, I, everyone I went to elementary school with are dead or are in prison for life, and I'll never see them again, you know what I mean? So for me to get out is like one in a thousand that make it, you know what I mean? Experts estimate there are between 1,500 and 1,800 homeless teenagers in the Sacramento area. And while not all of them will end up in a gang, they are more vulnerable. Some of them will join a gang just to get a sense of family and support. And according to the Sacramento Police Department, the number of confirmed gang members in the city is growing. Through 2003, the department's gang unit identified more than 3,400 gang members. One year later, that figure has reached more than 4,000, with at least 50 new young people a month being initiated into a gang. Gang life is a choice, and for some like Tanisha, it seems like the only choice. But the Sacramento Police Department is trying to change that for young people before it's too late. With the collaboration of three Sacramento high schools, Sacramento police officers have become teachers, introducing more than 300 students a year to a life of crime fighting as an alternative to a life of crime. Somebody does something wrong, that doesn't mean automatically you go, give me 20 push-ups. So you can hate me, but you'll love me later on. Somebody else, hey look, we working together, dog. If you can't do this with us... These are the streetwise words and wisdom of Officer Samuel Davis. Whether he's sharing his energetic advice with the whole class or connecting one-on-one, -on -one, the students at Hiram Johnson High School are responding. He's like a teacher that you would never expect to have in the classroom. But he's open and he, he uses words that no one else does. You get more flies with sugar. He says things that regular teachers don't say. Oh my goodness, no son. Uh, that give me a heartburn for a month. He's more, I don't know, he's just open more. Davis is a popular presence on campus and one of three Sacramento police officers leading criminal justice academies within the city's school system. His colleagues include Officer Kerry Quinn at Kennedy High School and Grant High's Officer Shonda Davis. When she entered the academy, she entered with so many ideas, new ideas, new goals for us. And I was like, wow. So it's been a great experience. She's really committed and responsible. I was just happy when she joined. She's always willing to give us her opinion and let us know how she feels. She brings a sense of reality to the academy that didn't used to be there. A sense of reality that influences more than 300 students, grades freshman through senior, at the three schools. Sponsored by the Sacramento Police Department, these criminal justice academies use both casual and dress uniforms. Physical fitness testing, military disciplines, and community service are required to educate and enlighten the next generation. Students volunteer for this four-year program where a law enforcement curriculum is stressed. Freshman year, our students are learning professionalism, ethics, and the history of law enforcement. Sophomore year, they're learning computer skills, driver's ed, and first aid, and some law. Junior year, they go into more law, a little bit of investigation and report writing. Senior year, they're doing more law and specific crimes, like crimes against the person, crimes against property, um, drug and alcohol crimes and even more report writing. So there's a varied curriculum depending on the year they're in. What I'm hoping that my students will leave with when they graduate from the academy um, is a sense of pride and professionalism, a good work ethic. I also hope that they have an insight into law enforcement. I want them to walk away with confidence knowing that they have the knowledge the skills and the tools to be successful in life. And of course, I would love to have them come to work for the Sacramento Police Department as police officers. We do have a significant number of students that actually become student trainees or community service officers, and then a smaller number that come into the actual police officer, but many of them go into some field of law enforcement. One such student is 1996 Kennedy High School graduate Pang Lee, now a police officer with the city of Davis. 
Going through the academy definitely influenced my decision to become a police officer. I think I got a lot of the program that the normal high school student wouldn't have gotten from high school. Prior to coming into the program, I knew nothing about law enforcement or police work or you know, the penal code, the vehicle code, report writing. And when I graduated after the end of the four years, you know, I, I, I had all that down. Others hope to follow in his footsteps. So I would like to be a law enforcement officer for the Sacramento Police Department. When I joined this academy, right when I joined it, I knew that my calling was to become a police officer. I hope when I graduate from college to move back to Sacramento and join the SAC PD. But even if the students don't go into law enforcement, the officers still see value in the criminal justice academies. And the police department is proud that the students represent us at community service and they have an excellent reputation. We're involved because we're just putting back to, into the community good positive role models, good students. Law enforcement is also about the quality of life for the citizens that live in this community. And part of that commitment to provide them with a good quality of life is investing in programs such as a criminal justice academy, where we focus on the youth and we provide them with resources and opportunities for them to make mature, responsible choices that will be a part of their lives for the rest of their life. The camaraderie, support, and family feeling in the academies stays with the students throughout their lives. I like how we're like a family. You can always count on somebody being there, um, whether it's our friends or our instructors. Working with Officer Davis, it's a beautiful relationship that he has between the, the students and himself. I see him as, a, as another side father. Um, he's really taking me under his wing. I watch out for these kids. What I do a lot of times is, it's funny, I have like the old school wisdom. I'm always talking to them. I'm always telling them about lessons learned, always giving them the same type of love that a parent is giving his kids. There are some of them that call me dad, so that makes me feel good. I'd like to thank the Sacramento De Police Department uh, for giving us the support and the funding to do something like this. I don't know if they know what an awesome program this is. This program has helped me a lot. Because if without this program, I, don't, I really don't know where I'd be right now. And I hope to, to make them proud one day. To protect and serve is the purpose behind every police officer's badge. And in order to serve more effectively, there needs to be a level of trust and communication between the people of Sacramento and those who serve in the law enforcement community. With a city like Sacramento, which is becoming an increasingly diverse mix of people and cultures, finding a common ground is a major challenge. With that realization, the Sacramento Police Department continues to address the challenge of serving in what Time Magazine called America's most diverse city. Sacramento has changed, so it's grown so much, first of all. It's gone from a, a medium-sized valley city to a, a, a metropolitan area, uh, a huge metropolitan area, multi-million people in this metropolitan area. And the diversity has changed, especially in the city, uh, even more so. It's not just that Sacramento has grown in numbers, but more importantly, in the diverse growth of different cultural and ethnic groups. Over the last decade, while the Caucasian population has decreased by 10%, minority populations are growing. It's this demographic collage that the police department is committed to effectively serving through people and programs dedicated to making Sacramento a better, a safer place to live. We want to mirror the community we serve. It's critical. It's not just uh, something that we say. It's something we're committed to. Public safety is about that community out there trusting us. They have to trust us. And if building that trust, if it takes a, an officer of the same uh, ethnicity or, um, or language capabilities as a particular group, then that's what we need. Sort of like a mediator in that aspect. The police department is attempting to increase diversity. That they, as many of us community members, see that as important to our community. Do they live on the property? When people okay. in the community well, see officers who look like them, 
they're more willing to, to participate with those officers and to help uh, the officers work within that community. The need for a more inclusive police department is apparent. And the Sacramento Police Department is committed to finding the ways to attract and recruit the right individuals, reaching out to the community to educate, inform, and foster interest in law enforcement is key in achieving a police force which effectively reflects the population it serves. It's through this positive presence that the choice of becoming a Sacramento police officer is becoming a more attractive career decision. When I was applying for the Sacramento Police Department, the logo of the time or slogan of the time was, don't just have a job, make a living. And to me, that was the first step in what we're doing now. What time of day is this occurring? Um, now we're saying this is a career, this is a calling. And the Sacramento Police Department is vigorously recruiting people from all over uh, Sacramento and this region to reflect the community more. We've done some focused recruiting in the past where we uh, went out and recruited in, in certain neighborhoods that had more of a, a diverse background in hopes of getting more uh, minorities coming to the police department. I, I got this Our department and the city sure. have put forth tremendous efforts to recruit minorities to the department. <laughs> And one of the purposes is just that, is to better the communication between the community and the police, to break down some of the barriers that exist within the minority communities toward the police. I think it is very important for children growing up to be able to look to people in authority and people that they respect or should respect and see folks like themselves so that they can see a role model out there that they can say, I would like to do that also, and I know I can. To attract potential recruits, the police department is reaching out to the young men and women of Sacramento through programs such as the Magnet School Program, which exposes high schoolers to a positive image of being a police officer. While keeping the entry standard high, the recruitment process is making it easier for young people to get involved through the police recruit position. As early as age 18, the recruit goes through a training program preparing them for the police academy while still attending college. And to reach an even wider segment of the population, the department has adopted civilian support through the community recruiter program. And this is a community person, a community leader that is trained and interfaces with the police department. To be able to deal with specific groups and go out there and carry our message for us. If the responsible members or the leaders of the community demonstrate support for the police department and the remaining members of that community see that, and they then will begin to look at the department in a more positive light. If we have um, people from a variety of backgrounds it brings a richness to those ideas that change the organization. It brings a perception. It brings a whole different point of view to those ideas that's going to make us even better than we are. And another thing that makes them better is recruiting officers that meet their high standards. Once we uh, have our officers, regardless of with their ethnic makeup, if they're going to go out there and do a good job and communicate well, present themselves in a professional manner, that person on the street's not going to care whether they're black or white. They're going to say, hey, that's a damn good officer, and I want to join that department. What we are looking for in a police officer is integrity, honesty, professionalism, courage, bearing, tact. Uh, we're looking for all those qualities that make up a good human being and a good public servant. Because the badge that we wear reflects the public trust, as my mom said to me every day when I went out, she said, Sylvia, remember who you are and who you represent. In each edition of City Beat, we bring you Above and Beyond. This special segment spotlights employees of the Sacramento Police Department who go beyond the call of duty. That extra effort is a valuable asset in the fight against gangs and their vicious cycle of violence. For one particular Sacramento police detective, that effort translates into many donated hours to help create a summer camp experience that encourages young people to stay out of gangs. Oh, it's great. You get, you know, you start off the week with, uh, uh, you know, 150 children. 
that are just terrified when they first come in and they're smiling when they leave the next day and they're giving you high fives and they're giving you hugs and they're, they're just having a good time. To see a smile on a kid's face that just warms your heart. The camp experience is fantastic, not only for the adults, but for the children as well. Um, the children that are 9 to 12, 9 to 13 years of age come in for the week and we work as mentors for them. Stay in school and study hard you can do that, okay? We teach them how to make safe choices and proper choices in life, that they can stay away from guns. Uh, they don't have to get involved in gangs. I will never use a gun to settle an argument. I will never use a gun to settle an argument. Our goal for their experience is one, that they had fun. Two, that they got to know some police officers that they could turn to at any time. Doesn't matter where they are. If they need help, they should know that we're there. They should feel safe going, being able to go to a police officer, and they should feel secure in knowing that they are somebody special. You're absolutely awesome, okay, babe? I can't even begin to, to think of the number of hours over the year. It spans over the year. Detective Walker puts in hundreds of hours of her time it's weekends, it's evenings, it's early in the morning. She's my right-hand person. Um, something goes wrong, she's the first person I call. Something goes right, she's the first person I call. Uh, just recently, we were unable to have camp at our lo previous location. Called her right away, and within hours she had magic worked. And we were here at Hiram Johnson, which is her alma mater. I'm just out here doing what I do, you know. But it's important for the kids to see someone that is working hard, that is abiding by all of the laws and you know and and still enjoying life all the pressures of life that come down on you you can get through it I, I feel like they're all my kids because you know every parent wants their kid to behave well and wants them to be respectful and all that so that's what we teach them out here we are the kids we are the kids the mighty mighty kids the mighty mighty kids a million thanks to the Sacramento Police Department and Detective uh, Walker. I, I couldn't do it without them. They've definitely been our blessing. Making a difference in our community. That's what Detective Walker is doing, and that's what the Sacramento Police Department wants to do in the lives of kids in Sacramento. Commissioned officers are sworn to uphold and enforce the law, but through their efforts in magnet school programs, cops and kids, and gang intervention, they hope to never have another young person in the back of a patrol car. If you'd like more information about the Sacramento Police Department, visit their website at sacpd.org. We hope you'll join us again next time for another look behind the scenes of the Capital City's police force. For City Beat, I'm Joe Oliver. Ladies, get going and get fit at the Female Fitness Challenge, sponsored by the Sacramento Police Department. First prize is a trip to Brazil, the first annual Law Enforcement Expo, August 28th at William Land Park.